Welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to fix that print head once and for all. The loose bearing has been a bane of my existence. And uh, yeah, we are going to uh, look at what the fix is going to be. So Chidi has an official fix, but I'm going to spice it up a little bit to make sure it is never going to happen anymore. Because apparently the claims they were making that I was the only one having issues were absolutely false. We know right now we are actually with four people with loose bearings. Very interesting to hear is that the glue started softening and the glue that was on the bearing started to deform of the heat and then they got that loose bearing. Funny enough the conversations I had with Chidi they confirmed they were thinking about a spring mechanism to hold in the bearing but they decided to glue it. But if you are one of the unlucky ones with a loose bearing I'm going to show you and guide you in every step you need to do to fix it once and for all. First of all, we are going to remove the top glass and put it somewhere safe so we don't break it. I'm going to use the filament color so I can remove the spool attached to it. Now you need to remove this cover. You can just lift it up like this. Now we are going to remove this white cover using an Allen key with a bolt right here, here, here and here in this corner. And by rotating this, you can lift this complete part out. Now we removed everything. We can see that the lower bearing is completely loose in my version. Now grab your next proper size Allen key because there is a bolt right over here, here, here and here. So when we spread the cover on the bottom we can remove the bearing. So this is the bearing that is going to be loose. Now we are going to switch cameras to the front so we can see what we have to do to fix it. This is going to be the actual way that GD wants you to fix it. So you screw in these two bolts and then the bearing is grabbed by the bolts and everything is nice and tight. I'm going to one up them. I have bought this silicone kit. It can exceed 300 degrees so this is going to be more than hot enough. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a big bead on the back of the bearing before I clamp everything together. Then I'm going to screw in these bolts and if in the case that these bolts are going to vibrate loose because we are turning some bolts and some plastic. I hope that the silicone kit that I'm going to apply on the back of the bearing is going to supply some extra comfort that if this is going to vibrate loose then the bearing will be held by this silicone kit. A bit the same like they are doing but there is some kind of a glue so I hope that combining these two is going to give me the absolute security that this is never going to happen again. So right here those two little dots are the glue that they used. You can see that one of those dots actually melted away and we also have a little dot right over here it also perished. So it seems that the people that are having trouble are actually onto something and that the glue that they are using is perishing from the heat and they are not using a glue that is resistant to the high temperature that the printer is capable of putting out. So it's really neat to see that they have added two holes in the back in order for you to fix it. So they were thinking forward, but I would say why don't just install it straight from the factory. So right now I'm going to apply some of this black silicone goop right in the middle of those two things that were melting away like that. So there is a nice big dot of silicone in there. Let's put in the bearing and assemble everything back together. We have turned it around and now we are going to repeat the same steps. First we are going to do the carriage with those four bolts. So the four bolts are in and now it's time to apply the GD fix which is going to screw in these two bolts right here in the lower carriage. But I'm going to go straight forward before the silicone dries out and drive these two bolts in until we don't have any rattling anymore. We can see we have a bolt right here and a bolt right here and one thing you can notice is that the clamshell is going to open up a little bit because you are screwing in a bolt right over here so make sure to tighten it but not over tighten it when you feel resistance and there is nothing moving again then it seems like you have done enough to secure your bearing and that is why I'm using the silicone because you will have to be very light on those bolts it is just a crap system guys we're going to be very honest it's a bad system and they really really need to redesign what they are doing with the lower bearing so right now the only thing you will have to do is wait for this silicone to dry. This is going to take probably around 24 hours but because I already went ahead and done everything I have done the testing and I'm going to show you if the bearing is not moving around how the print quality is really gonna be. First of all I'm going to address something. Somebody asked for me uh, to do a first layer test. Well I did one right over here. This is PETG and this is the full build plate. Now the first thing you're going to see is we have an empty spot right over here and we have an empty spot right over here and the reason is going to be very simple. This print head actually has some exclude zones. So there is an exclude zone right over here and there's an exclude zone right over here and you can see right here in the corner it started uh, yeah 
doing some weird stuff and the exclude zone on the top side is going to be for the ejection mechanism and the one here in the corner is for the actual uh, filament cutter that is hitting the frame so if you're going to try to print right here in this little corner the filament cutter will hit the frame it will cut your filament and you are totally screwed now this could actually be some kind of an automated system where they smack the filament cutter on the side of that part and use the filament cutter that way instead of adding an extra motor in order to cut the filament to do some color changes which is actually pretty sweet i'm going to show you a little demonstration of how that could work so i think they did it on purpose that the print head can hit the frame to make a filament cut so you don't have to really need they are not confirming anything by the way so it will still have to be seen and the thing you can hear right now is the first layer just peeling off the build plate so it's going to be really neat to see if they are going to use the uh, feature or it is really uh, more of a design flaw and that the filament color is just ugly in the way but i think that they were smart enough that the filament color sticking out hitting that bump here in the corner they were thinking forward for the AMS. Now the first layer is releasing, the build plate is completely cooling off. And this is what you are actually going to get. This is my first layer on PETG. We can actually see that uh, right over here, it is a little bit thin. Now the PETG, looking at the color, you can see I have printed this actually a little bit too cold. This should have been printed a lot hotter because this is a 150 millimeters a second print. And I think the temperature of the PETG was a little bit too low. But all by all, I think this is still a very respectable first try of a first layer. This is actually the first one I do. And if you want to know the true size of what a square is going to be on the GD plus four, we are going to measure it. So this is going to be the size if you want to full square on the build plate, which is just under 30 centimeters. And when we rotate it, we can see that we get even less. It is more about 29. So if you decide to buy this print because you want to do full build plates, then you are going to be shit out of luck. This corner and this corner is going to prevent you from filling it up completely if you want to print square things. This was actually pretty surprising. Thank you so much for asking me if this is actually going to work. And you can see in the GD studio that we have an exclusion zone right over here and right over here. First of all, let's look at the issue. And here you can see there seems to be uh, quite a lot of Z bending. Some of you guys answered on the comment section and said that these prints sucked. And you were totally right, these prints suck. We also printed one of the most cursed objects in the world, the T800 Roctopus, and we can also see that we have quite a lot of instability. Now, I claimed it was a speed issue, 300 millimeters a second on ABS, probably pushing it, which is probably also true, but the results are that it is still not looking that great. We have a lot of instability. After the fix, I did a massive amount of testing, and even in this testing, we could see that we had some kind of a Z-banding. So first of all, I was very confused. The print head was fixed, and we still got Got that Z bending effect. So what the hell was actually going on? So we have two problems, inconsistent filament and then we have a model with two shells and no infill. So first of all we changed the filament and we put in some infill and this is going to be our first result. I have teased this object to you guys. This has been printed in uh, I think it was Creality Hyper PLA or something like that. The results are absolutely amazing. Now there is no point in trying to show you. White objects are absolutely terrible and try to show off on camera, but printing with PLA actually gave us a pretty decent result. We could see that almost all the issues disappeared. So I have printed this thing. Now you can see that this thing has broken in many more ways that you can see. And this is because the print had crashed into the object. I forgot to release it from the build platform. I pressed the home all function and the nozzle just broke everything that was on this object. But still we have some interesting things to see and some things that we could call z-banding. So first of all we can see a huge improvement in the layers right over here. We don't have a lot of z-banding but we do see a lot of inconsistency. Then when we are looking a little bit higher you can see that we are starting to get some more z-wobble. Well this is not z-wobble. These things are actually pretty flexible. Also right over here you can see there is absolutely no infill in this. This is about 5% of cubic infill which is basically nothing. Because I wanted to test how flexible things are to try and recreate the z-wobbling we could see on the ghost and we can see that the z-wobbling isn't as bad as we thought. So I switched up the design. We have now a very basic shape, the v-shape, 
we have printed all of these objects at 250 millimeters a second, no slowdowns, so these have all been printed at full whack. And this is going to be great to decide if we actually have an issue with Z-Wobble or not. So first of all, we have the white one. No point in showing you the white one, but I can see right here that the info is showing up on all places, which is really cool. This is just a very translucent uh, color of filament, but I can also see on the white that it is absolutely perfect. So we started off great. We know right now PLA is absolutely not a problem. So this has been printed at 300 millimeters a second. We can still see a very faint of inconsistent layering. So I think the ABS filament definitely needs a tune in order to get our best results. I think some pressure advanced or looking at the flow. So I redid the testing at 250 millimeters a second. These are the results of ABS at 250 millimeters a second. Is it the best? Probably not. So I think the ESON ABS Plus right now is not the best filament I have tested, but I have tested more filament. So I have tested out this. This is going to be PETG. This has also been printed at 250 millimeters a second, and we can actually see that we are starting to get some kind of a VFA artifacting. Now this is going to be a very glossy filament, and this is going to show up everything that it slows down. As we can see, the filament is actually pretty flat looking. So this filament has been or printed too fast, which is the case in this one, or we have to increase the nozzle temperature to get that nice and glossy finish of a PETG. So for this one, we can actually see that the print settings were far from optimal for this PETG. Then we have PETG that has been reinforced with carbon fiber and the results are actually pretty amazing. So right over here, we can see that the result is very close to perfect. We can see right over here where the prints slowed down for the holes. This is pretty normal, but we can see even on the other side that the print consistency of the carbon fiber PETG was just absolutely amazing. For 250 millimeters a second, this is a no-brainer. Now, if you're going to ask me what kind of brand the PETG carbon fiber infused filament is, I have no clue. It was some kind of a bargain bin deal. It costed about 22 euros for a spool of one kilogram. I got two spools. So this is going to be a no-brand. Uh, carbon filled PETG and it absolutely nails the print. It is also super strong, it is super stiff, so this is actually a pretty cool material. So because the print results of this guy weren't perfect, I printed his bigger brother. This is the T800 Roctopussy version 2. So this time I actually did a little filament tuning, so we get the nice and glossy finish back of the PETG. So this is the same filament. This is only tuned way better than this one. We can see the dull finish. This is not how PETG should look like. And you can see that this piece right here has been printed too fast or too cold, depending on what you're looking for. So this is before the fix and this is after the fix. And we can see that we got our print stability back to normal and the print is absolutely looking amazing. So we can conclude that putting a piece of foam behind the bearing is not going to be the solution because I think only printing this guy, we started off perfectly. And once we got more further in the print, we can see that the instabilities were getting worse and worse. And this was probably the foam degrading from all the hot temperatures. So this has been printed at 90 C bed temperatures, 65 degree uh, built heat chamber temperatures. And the bearing and the print hat is getting so hot that the foam deteriorated in a matter of hours. Now, once you have done the screw fix, and in my case applied the extra silicone for extra protection, we can actually see that we regained all the print stability and that the actual quality of this object printed at 200 millimeters a second. And now I'm actually able to print cool stuff like this to put on the shelving. My wife actually asked to print three of these guys. I'm going to put a picture on. This is actually such a cool print. The QC issue with the bearing is bigger than we think. It is going to be more than one. So right now there are three more people that have bearing issues. So I would not say that it is not an issue. The chances of being more than four guys right now is going to be considerably higher. So right now, if you are going to buy a batch one series of this printer, then it could be possible that you are going to be one of the unlucky ones. Now there are going to be a huge amount of printers being tested right now by guys like you watching me right now. And uh, the good news is it's fixable. Two bolts in the back and you're back to running. In my case, I would highly recommend you to replace the glue that GD put in 
and put some kind of a silicone behind it that if the screws are going to vibrate loose then this ceiling is going to capture the bearing so it stops it from moving. We also figured out that the build plate is actually smaller than we think. We have this little corner right over here that we cannot use and right in the back there's also an exclusion zone which is going to mean that if you are looking for a square build plate that you are not going to get 30 by 30 but it's going to be more 29 by 27 if I'm not mistaken. Most people are not going to print squares like this so this is not a massive issue but if you are having only millimeters to spare then I'm afraid that the 30 by 30 on this printer is not going to deliver on your expectations. There were also a lot of people that were very happy that we addressed some of the fanboy issues that people are going to have when they love a printer. It's very okay to love a brand. I love this printer, but this doesn't mean that I am not open to buy other printers like the Redbrick that is sitting around and that I'm going to say GD is the best because <laughs> they are probably not. There are going to be brands that are going to be better than this. And this is something that you will have to accept going forward. There will always be brands that are going to be better than the printers that you own right now. If it's going to be the same brand, good for you. If it's not, then it's time to change up and get to another brand. Then they also switched from GD Slicer to the GD Studios. Now I have used this GD Studio quite a lot the last few days and I have to say I really enjoy the experience that the GD Studios gave to me. However, if that's not your experience, we have somebody called Mike that has actually opened a GitHub with a profile for the Plus 4 uh, on Orca. So if you want to use Orca, I'm going to link it down below. Mike, thank you very much for sending me the link to Orca Slice. We finally have fun. And with that note, I'm going to finish this video. I'm probably going to do a definitive review of the system in a few months. I really need to put some more print time in this machine but right now it's time for me to take a little break oh yeah and if you're wondering what the next video is going to be right now we still have a broken sofa sitting around we have the polar dryer boxes that i'm testing out we still have to build a rat rig which is going to be a multi-part series but this is probably going to wait a little bit but i also have the k-touch from big tree tech which is going to manage all your clipper printers all on one device so i have a lot of content to subscribe for i'm going to slow down a little bit so don't expect me to provide you a video every week normally these videos are getting pre-released to the members but because we are in some kind of a momentum with the plus 4 i just want to push the content as fast as possible but right now i'm going to take my sweet time testing everything out and if you're still watching and subscribe to the channel thank you very much especially these guys the members of the channel if you're interested for only one buck a month you can support the channel too if not that's perfectly fine maybe subscribe to the channel and guys i see you in the next one